Thomas Green here with Ethical Marketing Service. On the podcast today, we have Marnie Homer. Marnie, welcome. Thank you for having me, Thomas. It's lovely to be here. It's a pleasure to have you. Would you like to take a moment and tell the audience a little bit about yourself and what you do? Sure. Well, um, I've been in business myself for over 23 years. I am more of the business creator. It's my superpower. And this is, I'm now on my 13th successful business. Uh, I'm also a number one international best-selling author in three countries and three categories. And so what I do now is actually help small businesses with staff under 50 get themselves seen and heard out in the marketplace so that it can be um, known, liked and trusted through uh, blogs and articles, making them the authority in the industry and through social media posting. Okay. Well, thank you for that. Um, you said you've been in three businesses. Um, are you still juggling those businesses or uh that ain't all together no i've only got the one currently um it's been over the last 23 years you know some of them i've had for six months some of them i've had for 14 years uh some i've sold some i've morphed some i've self-sabotaged which i'm not afraid to admit these days you know we all all make mistakes along the way that's how we learn right yeah definitely um what well, failure is feedback mm-hmm. so you sure said you is. wanted to talk about um internal validation so um mm -hmm. for those that don't know what would you say um is the definition of internal validation okay so internal validation is when you you know that you're good enough you know that you're worthy you know that the work you produce is of the standard that people will love that you have no self-doubt that you know uh that you know, everything that you do is for your higher purpose and that you're serving others and people are going to be happy with what you do. There's so many examples these days of, of people requiring the external validation, such as the likes and comments on social media posts and, oh, you know, that one only got 15 likes and nobody liked that one or, you know, or maybe maybe I need to put a picture of my dog up and then they'll like that. And that's that's the external validation that you get from social media. But it's also those that require um, awards or, you know, recognition from industries and all kinds of things like that. Whilst that's all nice to get, it shouldn't be needed. You should know in yourself that you've got what it takes. I think in terms of what you said about um, balance, like if, if far um, external validation seems to be um, far more needed, it seems by people at the moment in terms of a scale than internal validation. Do you think there's any um, consequential, should we say benefit to having some element of external validation? Look, I, I still think it's nice to get. Obviously, everybody likes to get a pat on the back from others. Everyone likes to be recognised for the work they've done. However, it's it, it shouldn't be needed if that's what it makes. It shouldn't be that you need to get that validation. Take, for example, somebody who is working in a job, for example, someone that hasn't taken the leap yet into entrepreneurialism, and they're just doing stuff to please their boss, to make their boss happy, to get that, that pat on the head from their boss. and when they don't get that, that's when the need for external validation goes too far because they might quit their job or they might, you know, um, walk away from something because they didn't get that validation that they needed. Does that make sense? Yeah, perfect sense. I've heard it um, described as, like, in terms of conditioning, you know, when, when children go up to their parents with their colouring in and they um, ask for that kind of feedback and we... We don't grow out of that. We take it with us until you recognise that and sort of self-knowledge and you grow beyond it, if you see what I mean. Mm -hmm, absolutely. And we've got a, a real problem, like in, gen, in the generation now, Gen Z, we've got a massive problem with um, the need for external validation, not only through social media, but with this whole generation all being taught that they're special that you know they they basically that they're expecting to be able to start in a company and go to the 200th level straight away without having to do the hard work they're all expecting just to 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 reach the top of the company because they've all been told how special they are and that everybody gets a prize and everybody wins you know so they have no filters on the whole knowing that they're good enough knowing that they're worthy in the side themselves they just 
crave from from the outside. So I can actually see a real problem for me here. Mm. I feel like um, a little bit like the message or at least the intent behind um, my perception of the intent behind that message is like anything's you, you're capable of anything. Um, but mm -hmm. what's missing from that message is providing you put the work in. Would you say that's fair? That's yeah, absolutely. That's that's absolutely fair. Whereas um, in my generation, and you're definitely younger than me, so, <laughs> but I, I'm one down from the boomers. I'm like, you know, I, I'm I'm not a millennial. I'm in between the two of those, you know. So like, so we were taught when we were kids that there was nothing special about us. And if we didn't go out there and work our butts off, then we weren't going to get anything alive. So it, it's gone completely polar opposite now to where they all told how special they are and that, you know, there's, there's always everybody gets a prize regardless. So it's, it's really done a whole about face. So in terms of uh, benefits of internal validation, let's say someone mm -hmm. takes on that particular philosophy and they apply it, what, what would they be expected to gain? Okay, so if you build up your internal validation, and I mean, it took me years to get it as well because it's, it's something that you, you work on in your mindset. But if, you, if you've got that internal validation, then you're not afraid to put yourself out there. You're not afraid to, you know, complete work like if you wrote a book or something and you got three quarters of the way through it and went, oh, no one's going to like that and I'm not going to put it out there. What would people think? You're not afraid to just give it a go. You're not worried about what other people think or what they're going to say if you do step out of your comfort zone. Uh, it doesn't actually matter. I mean, there's people out there that will drag you down and pull you down, you know, at any moment. But their opinions don't matter to you when you've got that internal validation, which means you really can just keep pushing forward to reach whatever goal you want to. You're like the sky's the limit when you've got, you know, enough validation in yourself. Mm. I do feel that um, it can be hugely beneficial. Um, it sort of touches on what I asked before, which is providing you've got that um, standard. So mm -hmm. I kind of feel like providing you've got that, um, excellence or your your work is, is of a very high standard then internal mm -hmm. validation is extremely important because mm -hmm. no matter what someone says to you you know you've done a great job and the work is mm -hmm. of high quality whereas mm -hmm. um, if you have internal validation and the work is not of high standard it's almost like it's almost um, not a beneficial thing at that point have you got any thoughts there yeah, absolutely. I mean, you know, obviously we all, all got to strive for our best. And as you said earlier, you know, you've got to be able to put that work in um, and be able to produce what is classed as good enough. I mean, like I have high internal validation and I know that the work that I produce is good. However, you know, I mean, I still get knocked each and every day. I think it, it's part of society. It's like um, I was talking to a girlfriend this afternoon who's actually a NLP trainer and she was saying that probably 80% of people are still trying to tear other people down, still in that mindset where they've got to try and, you know, do what they can. I, I, I got torn down twice today um, by people online. One lady told me I was posting too much on LinkedIn and that, you know, that if, if I didn't respond to her within 48 hours, she'd consider I, I was a bot and she'd report me. And, like, it's all just, you know, wanting to knock people down, wanting to pull them down so they're not out there shining as much. Do you know what I mean? Mm. Um, so to be able to get to the point with that internal validation of where I am is, I mean, like, like, you know, I know my work is good. If my work's not good and somebody says, I can say, okay, fine. I can accept that. And here's a better version, always striving for the best, but also those people where I know that they're simply just wanting to tear me down like today is it doesn't affect me. Do you know, I just think I actually, I actually, I'm able to reframe it now where I can say, okay, well, that's just another person that's helping me be more resilient and stronger. Yeah, I, it sounds like very much an evidence-based approach. So um, if the evidence is there that your work is great, then you don't really need to worry about it. Whereas if there, mm. if there is criticism which is justified, you are able to see that. And that's, again, more of a balanced approach. Mm -hmm. absolutely definitely I mean like you know I said I was pulled down twice today I had had another guy who was checking out all of my posts on Facebook and on um, LinkedIn 
And his comments back to me was like, oh, well, if you claim that you're the queen of content, then how come you're not getting so much, you know, interaction on your posts? And it's like, it's it's like, really, Nate? Like, have you got nothing better to do with your day than, you know, look at my posts and, and, and try to pick fault with what I'm doing? Like, you know, so I'm at the point where that kind of stuff doesn't worry me. Do you know mm. what I mean? Because it's not always about how many likes and comments you get on the post. It's what's happening in the inbox that he doesn't see, you know? Well, it comes back again to um, even if it were the case that you weren't, weren't getting engagement and you know that your posts are of high standard, then the actual engagement is irrelevant at that point because mm -hmm. either it's the case that um, you will get that engagement providing your quality mm -hmm. is great or mm -hmm. um, it's irrelevant because you're proud of what you've done. It's of a high standard and you're mm -hmm. not looking for external validation as you say that's exactly it but the thing is with these days so many people um are looking for it it's the person that spouts the it's the influence that spouts oh i've got a hundred thousand followers on instagram look at me i'm amazing yet they get no interaction because you know they've just gone and found themselves a hundred thousand random people do you know what i mean but they're still craving that validation from you know other people because look at me look at me do you know it's that whole scenario where that just doesn't serve them doesn't serve them. Uh, we touched on social media a little bit, and um, you you do a lot of work on it, as you said. Um, mm -hmm. Do you think I, I've heard some different opinions on this in terms of whether or not it's worsened as a result? And I'm referring to internal validation versus external mm -hmm. validation. Mm -hmm. um, what are your thoughts on how social media has amplified, revealed, or you know how, how has it influenced that? I think it's had a, had a major impact on people's need for external validation. I mean, if you go back 20 years ago, we'd go out for dinner with our friends, for example, but we didn't need to take 400 photos of us. Look, I'm out with such and such. And like, look at me, I'm, I'm, I'm a social butterfly. And look at the food we're eating, you know, and there was no need to do that. Uh, people didn't crave, you know, oh, you know, I've got to, you know, quick, we've got to get a selfie because I've got to have my 300 Facebook friends see that I had friends and I was out, you know, or there was no need to, like, take a photo of the flash cars. Look what I've got because I'm successful, you know. There was no need for that. So I think social media has um, a part to play. However, the need for external validation has always been there, has always been in the people that weren't confident, who didn't believe in themselves. And even to a point, those people that didn't believe in themselves, if somebody said to them, oh, my God, what you've done is amazing, they still turn around and say, no, it's not. What are you talking about? Do you know? So it's always been a problem, but I just think social media has amplified that. Mm. And so I've heard the the position that it's just revealed more of us of, of what we are versus um, kind of worsened it. What does it mean going forward, do you think? Well, I, I, unless people are aware of the behaviours that they are displaying, then there's not much that's going to change. I mean, the very first step to fixing anything in your life is being aware that there's actually a problem. I mean, that goes for anything, right? So, um, unless people are fully aware and willing to accept the fact that perhaps they don't have the confidence, they don't have the certainty and they don't have the self-belief that they need and actually take the steps and do the work, the internal work to fix those things, then they're going to continue getting the same results that they're getting now, which may not be the successes that they want in life. So... Really, it comes down to education and sort of like letting people, uh, making sure people understand that, you know, whilst they're still out there looking for the pat on the head from Thomas Green or anybody else, then they're never going to have that fulfilled life. Well, I hope they're not waiting for that because I don't give many of those. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, anybody, you know what I mean? So. Yeah. Um, in terms of your social activity, like mm -hmm. um, your strategy, I would think because you have this philosophy, I'd like to know what, how you use it um, and what your approach is to responding to those types of things. And also, I don't know, just what your activity is around social media from a, from a use perspective. Okay. So, I mean, I, I am everywhere. 
on social media. I really, really put myself out there. And the reason why I do that is because I've got some big kick, kick butt goals this year to achieve. And so I know that the only way to achieve those goals is to be seen and heard. Um, so I've got people saying all the time that every time they open their LinkedIn, there's money, there's money staring. <laughs> I had um, one of my contacts of the day saying he expected to see me in his local coffee shop that morning when he went for his coffee. And I said, didn't you see the billboard outside? And I was like, so, um, so my activity on social media, I am very huge. I am everywhere. I post six, seven times a day for that purpose so that I can be seen and heard so that the no like trust happens faster for my company. Okay. In terms of, um, cause I do, I don't post that much, um, but mm -hmm. I do post regularly. Um, but in terms of my actual, uh, the time spent on social media, I don't spend any time on it really. So are you, do you enjoy it um, being on social and do you spend a lot of time on it? I actually have staff that take care of a lot of it for me. Okay. Uh, I outsource my work. To, I've got like 16, 16 staff currently. So I actually have a, a girl that works my LinkedIn full time um, every day because like I'm getting, I'm getting two or three hot, hot leads from her doing that a day. So these are two or three people that are jumping into my inbox. Basically the fish is jumping into the boat, if you know what I mean. And they're ready to buy because they've seen and heard me enough. Um, so I don't, I still spend some time on there because yeah, it's kind of fun, but I don't do the majority of the work. Mm. So there is a, um, strategic approach to it, you would say. Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, at the end of the day, especially LinkedIn, LinkedIn is a business network. Everybody is on there to network and grow their, their business. So why not utilize that? Well, you are, um, uh, doing well from it if you're getting inquiries I think probably the one um, question that I always I think people are always interested in is how you turn um, posts or engagements into inquiries and perhaps sales have you got any thoughts there okay so all of my posts on LinkedIn which I focus mostly on LinkedIn I still have a presence on Facebook and on Instagram but I don't love them if I'm honest Okay, LinkedIn is where, you know, I'm the queen of content. So all of my posts are usually educational or they are showcased. So in other words, you know, it's like a review or a screenshot of a podcast that I've just been on or a episode of a podcast or a video I've done or something like that. Some of them is video. So there's a variety of posts. And what I use those for is to show potential clients who I am, what I can do, how I can do it, and how I can help their business. So I base it on the problems my ideal market is suffering from, and I show them how I can for you solve that problem. And it's all about relationship building. So if somebody jumps in my inbox, for example, it depends on, you know, what it is they're looking for. I build a relationship with them. It's not like, a, you know, Hey, Thomas, by myself, it's like it takes time. It's not something that happens overnight. So we will have a conversation via message and then we will jump onto a Zoom call where, you know, we'll have a conversation about what they do, you know, what they need, and I will fill in the gaps for them. And then if I've earned enough trust with them, which usually I have because they've jumped into my inbox, if you know what I mean, that's when the sale happens. And I find that it's quite an easy sale because people don't jump into your inbox until they're ready. Mm. So um, the value add, um, and perhaps I've heard it referred to as taking someone from, if their goal is, let, let's say, Z and they're at A, if you help them get from A to B, then you've built the trust and you've shown you can help them, and that's when they get in touch. Does that sound about Pretty right? Pretty much. Yeah, pretty much, pretty much. I also make sure that every social media post that I put out has got some kind of call, of act, call to action, whether it's, you know, read my blog, uh, check out my article that I got published, check out this interview that I did. You know, if you're interested in my services, then message me. Everything has a call to action, every single post, um, because people need to be told. They need to be asked. If you don't say to the people, hey, reach out to me or, hey, read my blog, they won't do it. They need that direction. Mm. 
Well, you're if you're posting like six or seven times a day, um, my mm -hmm. guess is that um, frequency, um, it, that's again, um, strategic for you. So mm -hmm. do you see that number of posts correlate to number of inquiries? Absolutely, it's definitely increasing. Um, why the reason why I also do that many posts as well, and I do it consistently, and that's the word consistently every day, is because that's how you get seen. That is how you get above the noise, especially on social media these days and online businesses. Because there's not, there's no longer ten of us. There's now 150 of us all doing the same thing. Mm. So you've got to make sure that you're seen and heard, and you get above that noise. And that's how I'm doing it by being consistent every day. <laughs> and going on podcasts. Absolutely, this is my <laughs> third today. So. <laughs> wow, th third today. Um, yes. How how has podcasting become a part of your content? Okay, so obviously you have an audience that I haven't reached yet. So by coming onto the podcast and sharing my knowledge and my experience, people instantly get to know, like, and trust me because they've, they've listened to me for half an hour. And they've pretty much decided by then that I either know what I'm talking about or I'm full of it. And if they happen to decide that I know what I'm talking about, then they may connect with me on social which is when they'll see more of my information. So it's all about just, you know, reaching out to audiences that I may not have reached if I hadn't jumped on your podcast. So um, generally speaking, do you have a, a number that you try and hit each week or you have a target? No, look, I just, I, I, have, a, I have a monthly target um, every month and um, it gets raised every month as well. So I make sure that when I make my target, I celebrate every time. I make sure I celebrate every time. It might just be a wahoo, I've done it. You know, it doesn't have to be like, you know, a big all night party or anything like that. It's just you you acknowledge it and then you extend it. And that's how I work every time because that's how you continue to grow. That's how you continue to get better and better. And um, content creation in general, I mean, presumably you're, you're doing that for businesses and does it look pretty much like um, what you're doing for yourself very much like what I'm doing for myself um, because I need to showcase exactly what I can do so people can go and have a look at what I'm posting on LinkedIn uh, obviously you know I, I post what my clients want me to post but they can go and have a look at me on LinkedIn they can see the kind of things I'm posting they can see the variety that I'm doing and it shows my quality right there because naturally I'm going to put my best foot forward aren't I and do you ever post about what you're eating for dinner? No, I actually don't. <laughs> I don't think my target market would actually care. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's a very good point. Um, does that does that actually add any value to the person looking at it? No, not really. I mean, I do put some personal things on there. Every now and then I'll snap a photo with me and my kids or... Uh, you know, I'm out socialising and doing the whole networking thing. But, yeah, no, I, I, I do keep a lot of my private life private. So, so um, you've got a team of 16, which I yes. think, um, generally speaking, I think most people would aspire to that. So um, mm -hmm. congratulations on having a, um, a successful company. Um, what are your goals for your company? So um, my goals uh, is to head towards the first million. Okay, we're we're cornering that soon. Um, from there, it's just turnover. Yes, turnover. Yes, yes. Got to get the turnover before we get the profit. We're getting there. <laughs> um, but you know, that's the first goal, and then probably from there, over the next twelve months, we'll look at doubling that. Um, and then my goal is to sit on the beach, huh, while it runs itself. That's the goal. <laughs> <laughs> but what will you do on the beach? That's the problem. Well, you know, it's funny. I was actually asked that question by someone I was working with a couple of weeks ago. He, he he did the whole and then, you know, and so I had to really, really think about it. And to be honest, once I reached that point again, and I've been here before, but I got bored. So <laughs> there's a big lesson there. Once I get to the point where I am financially free and I am time free, um, I, I'm actually going to look at working um, with young teen girls who are getting themselves into difficulties and see what I can do to 
make a difference in their lives. I mean, I've got the mindset, I've got everything, all the skills I need to be able to potentially start my own charity to help, you know, young girls that are, you know, struggling with life. Mm. I would love to do something like that. I've heard it described as, um, and what will that do for you? Like, what will that allow you to do? Um, and I did, um, yeah. I spoke to someone who, um, maybe I, I might be able to introduce you if you're interested, but um, his mm-hmm. whole, his um, approach is that you combine your business um, with your, let's say, meaningful goal like you have, um, mm-hmm. because we are, um we spend at least a a large percentage of our time working and a lot of our time sleeping. And so Mm -hmm. if you wait until you hit your goal before you actually do something meaningful, then Mm -hmm. you're going to be like missing out on a lot of it essentially. But Mm -hmm. sounds like a very worthy goal is all I'd say. Yeah, absolutely. It's, it's, it's what I didn't get when I was younger. And so if I can make a difference in one girl's life, then I've won. And I've yeah, broken definitely. the mold. Is there anything that you think would be of value to the audience that I haven't asked you about today? Just just for them to, and it's easy, easier said than done until you do the inner work, but to believe in themselves and to know that they really can do anything that they want to do if they get the right mindset to go and build it. There's, there's nothing you can't do. Providing you put the work in, right? As long as you put the work in. <laughs> Yes, you've got to do the do. You've got to take the action, absolutely. But there isn't anything you can't do. So is is there any other aspects to your business or are you strictly content creation? Strictly content creation. We are being stretched um, in other in, in other directions where, I mean, I'm a big believer in sometimes you say, yes, you'll do something and then you work out how to do it later. So um, we are stretching into Facebook advertising. Um, this week it's been it's been a real collaboration week. I've had um, someone come on to do videography, somebody who's going to be doing email marketing with my company. So we are expanding very fast into other areas. Interesting. Yes. Marnie, where is the best place for people to find you? The best place to find me is on LinkedIn. I am the queen of content creation and I it's like my second home. Um, other than LinkedIn, you can check my website out at copywritersinternational.com or you can find me on Facebook, but LinkedIn is definitely my favourite hangout. I should have guessed really, shouldn't I? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, thank you very much for your time today. All right. Thanks for having me. Much appreciated.